Hi all, hope you're all well. Quite a few people have been asking for an update on, on this, um, so I thought it's about time uh, I did a quick update on where I am with the um, troubleshooting um, my Form 1 Plus um, and the suspected laser um, flare issues. Now, um, since we last, since I last uh, spoke, uh, basically Form Labs have asked me, asked me to actually bring the printer indoors. Um, where I'd been operating previously was outside um, in a conservatory, and um, the temperature at night used to drop down. Would drop down. So it's in the winter in the UK over here, so at night it's getting quite cold. It go down to five degrees Celsius. Um, but whenever I did use it in the conservatory, I'd run the heating, etc., in the conservatory um, up until the sort of ambient room temperature was at about eighteen degrees Celsius, and then I'd leave it for two hours at 18 degrees Celsius before I even attempted printing. So um, so we brought it inside, uh, brought the printer inside, I left it for a couple of days without doing anything to it. Um, and it's in the corner in the living room um, and that, that the room is constantly between, I don't know, 16 and 20 degrees Celsius, um, day and night. So um, I left it there and then I, I printed the test pieces again and um, it made a huge improvement. Just that one little thing made a huge improvement. So I suspect um, the Form Labs um, doesn't like um, cold resin. So if you're um, having some of the issues, um, perhaps one of the things you need to ever think about is the temperature of your resin or the temperature of your printer as a whole. Um, I, I now I'd suggest that you really want to be in a room where it's constantly 16, above 16 degrees Celsius. So this picture on the screen here, what I'm going to do is just I'm going to run through some of the threads I've been um, subscribing to and talking about the issues um, rather than pointing you. I'm just going to sort of skim over the, the high points. So um, here's a picture of um, a print I did outside in the conservatory and you can see the major defects of these like bubbles um, on the railwood face <coughs> of the test parts or any parts I printed um, and then <coughs> immediately when I brought it in indoors so when I brought it indoors um, this is the print I get okay so although you can still see so the parents of a lot of part cured um, jelly type resin um, we've got none of those major defects that are actually affecting the structural integrity of the um, part, the test part. So that was a, a real good win, um, just to get functional parts out of the printer that I could use. Okay, but now would be a good, probably a good opportunity to discuss what I consider laser flare and my interpretation of laser flare. So um, this is a close-up shot of my laser, and um, I sort of annotated it as to how I'm what I'm seeing and the, the effects on my prints. Okay, so we'll start with the good bit, which is this, this, the, the immediate spot of the laser, which is this bit here of the laser. So that's good. Okay, um, and then what we, what I'm referring to as laser flare, is this additional flare of laser that comes out. Now, from what I can gather from other users in the community, um, the extent to this flare varies. So most of the pictures I've seen, there is some of this flare, but it's not always as big or sometimes it's bigger but I think the intensity of that flare actually is varying so with printers that aren't having any issues I expect that the intensity of that flare is um, lower than the threshold for curing the, the, the resin as it were um, so that's why I'm considering the bad area and that bad area always is always facing the rear so this is the orientation so this is the rear of my printer so this will be the rear hood face of my uh, part um, so this is what I'm thinking is creating all this part cured jello um, resin in the tank. Um, I've got another small little blob here, um, which I don't think is causing any issues because at the moment the, the forward faces um, seem okay, seem not too bad. So perhaps this is in that, that, that instance where the intensity of this little bit of the flare is um, well below the threshold where it's going to um, cure the rest and um, as it passes, continuing over the same spot as it were. So remember the test the test pieces, the cross test pieces are specifically set up. So this bit of the resin, this bit of the flare is constantly going up and down over the same part of the resin to test to see if that will actually cure the resin, which I think it does. I think everyone agrees that that's, that's what's happening. Um, and another thing is you've got these two big um, people called these bunny ears. 
um, and I think historically it's just referred to as the carrot and the, the, the fair. So you got like a little carrot at the top here, which is the flare, and then you got the um, the top of the carrot, which is the green bit. Um, so some people refer to this as bunny ears as well. Okay, so that's the, when I'm talking about laser fair issue, this is this is what I'm basically describing and and talking about. So once I was getting um, great results with the print in the living room, or better results, should I say, um, I then ran the, the cross test, Kevin's cross test, at, at all the, the different variations of level heights. Um, so I started at 0.1, then went to um, 0.02, sorry, 0.05, and then 0.025 um, to to see how it affected the prints. Obviously at 0.25, you, you, the laser is going to be going across the same patch of um, resin um, four times as many times as it is at 0.1 times. So I would have expected before I started the test to have a, a poorer surface um, surface on the um, 0.05, um, which I did get in the end. Um, but again, as you can see from the pictures, there's no major um, structural fault with this sort of bubbling or this um, congealed part cured um, resin getting caught up in the actual print. So this is a close-up of the test part printed at 0.1mm um, layer heights. Um, and you can see I had to actually scratch off some of the part cured resin, but it was just on the surface, so it wasn't so bad. Um, but as you can see, I got a, you know, a usable part, um, perhaps not co cosmetically um, good, but I think mechanically um, it's more than adequate as a mechanical part rather than a, a cosmetic face part. Okay, so in this this is the test part again printed um, with the, the, v, the version 1 uh, clear resin from Form Labs. Um, and again, you're starting to see the effects of the laser flare, I believe, on the rare face. Um, so this is printed at 0.05 uh, millimeter layer heights. So this is the sort of medium um, setting as far as layer heights are concerned. And as you can see, um, it's this part of the resin actually affecting the print surface now, so it's you'll see they get progressively worse as we go down to the layer, the, the lower layer heights. And this is primarily because, in my opinion, um, that laser flare is crossing the same area of resin. So even though you've got the tilt and the lift on the resin tray, and there is some movement of the resin within the tray, um, the chances of the laser flare covering previously sort of contaminated resin is, is more kid. And finally, the last test, um, and this was printed at the, the really fine detail layer height setting at um, 0.025 millimeters. And as you can see, the, the, the surface is even worse here. Um, and I can only say that this is caused by this part cured resin actually interfering um, with the process, the whole process that the form one is based on. Um, and affecting the surface quality. Um, I think it's probably the, possibly the worst surface um, when it should be, in fact, the best surface. I think it's fair to say that um, within the last, what, five days, seven days, another a case of this has popped up on the um, Formlabs forum, forum uh, apart from the other ones that have been documented before. Um, and um, this guy, Alex, is, um, this is his laser flare picture. Um, and as you can see, we've got the sort of classic character shape here, but the actual, the flare, I think the flare that the, the most effective face on his test parts have been the front face, um, which makes sense when you look at his laser flare, yeah, and his, uh, his spot test. Um, so um, I'll, I'll just show you an example of what he's printing at the moment. Okay, so Alex, this is probably the worst example I found of Alex's prints, but they all follow the similar, very similar to what, what I'm seeing with mine. Um, he's printing inside a, a warm environment, um, so we can cross out um, sort of ambient temperature, uh, but I still maintain that, you know, um, you don't want to be printing um, with cold resin. Um, but as you can see, he's actually got the, although he's printing in grey here, um, he's got all this jello um, and this is directly as far as I'm concerned now um, caused by the part cured resin floating around in the um, tank and it's actually um, affecting the structural integrity of the part uh, but also the surface um, defects all these surface defects so this, this is like classic of Alex's a classic example of Alex's print 
This is another one of Alex's um, prints. Um, and basically, as you can see here, um, it's actually failed, the prints failed part by up because it's, there's just nothing for it to um, build on. Um, and Alex is going through the same procedure as I am with regards to filtering the resin, making sure the resin's clean, the mirrors are all clean, um, etc. etc. So all the fundamental sort of troubleshooting um, tests and workflow has all been taken care of. We are the mirrors are clean, the tanks are clean, um, and the resin has been filtered. Um, not that we should be filtering the resin in the first place. Okay, I'll actually put a link to the thread um, in the descriptions of the video, um, so you can read it in more depth um, if you if you're interested. Okay, so um, it's not all been doom and gloom. I had a nice little win um, earlier in the week. Um, basically, um, with the Hawker Hunter project I'm I'm working on uh, on the side. <laughs> um, I, I was originally going to print, um, do a vacuum forming for the canopy, and I saw some of the results some people were having with the clear resins, and thought oh, it would be worthwhile having a go at just printing a clear canopy and then polishing it up um, so it becomes transparent, um, and I had a really, really positive result on that. Um, so I, I printed I had to print it at 0.1 millimeters. So yeah, I had to print it at 0.1 millimeters because that was giving me that would give me the, the greatest um, possibility of success. Um, and Formula support would have been really keen for me to actually use the printer and, and it, although it's not optimum and not working um, as advertised, um, to actually get parts I can actually use out of it. So ideally because this was going to be polished and um, well, I wanted it to be trans, um, transparent, I'd either have printed it, well, ideally printed it at 0 0.05 or 0 0.025 um, so that the surface was as fine and as perfect as possible um, and that would lead to a lot less um, post cleaning and post sanding etc but um, regardless regardless of that um, it's printed um, and after a bit of sanding a couple of hours sanding um, this is the result I got um, which is great you know so it was, it was a real win um, and a real positive um, morale boost I suppose um, at the time because I actually felt yeah I, I can actually get somewhere um, with the form one, um, and even though it's not ideal at the moment, um, I can get usable parts out of it. So um, I think it's fair to say that the biggest issue I've got now is the constraints that I'm placed under um, from a design uh, perspective, because um, I can't orientate the part um, as it should be orientated uh, <clears throat> to get the best results because I have to be very aware of where the laser flare is going to um, affect the um, the surface. So I've got to think about what surface I want to be the best. Um, when the sports have been fitted, I can't always fit the sports where I want to fit them again because of the orientation of the print, um, etc., etc. Now I've tried to print this. I need to bring the weight down on this because the glass element of the um, canopies at the moment is um, one millimeter thick, and I should have been able to print this at 0.5 millimeters. I know it's getting towards the limits of um, the form lab print um, capacity. You know, I think the minimum re resolution is um, 30 microns. So you know, I'm, I want to print at 50 microns, um, which I thought would have been um, okay. And I've got close um, to getting a print out, but I think because of the excuse me, because of the issues I'm having with the laser flare, um, I'll get holes with a, even even with a simple, or I consider a, a, a fairly simple print, um, simple shape, um, where, where at the top here, where th there's a more opportunity for the laser to laser flare to pass over the same part of the resin, and part cure the resin, um, and then you end up with little holes and little patches um, where um, where it's actually infer interfering with the, the print build. Um, I, I've got a, I've done about eight eight samples so far, eight attempts at it. Um, I've changed the orientation and then everything. Um, and I'll take some photos of that hopefully later on this weekend um, and um, discuss those. Um, I also started printing, um, doing a sort of proof of concept for the um, printing using the SLA printer to print the moulds um, for the urethane foams, uh, for home casting. Um, and 
yeah, I've had mixed results with that, but I'll, I'll leave that to a, a, a separate video. Okay then, thanks for watching.